Today's lesson is about the chain rule, so another derivative rule. Um, this is basically derivative of a composition of functions. So what it is, is this. If y equals f of g of x, then the derivative equals, so we'd have to take the derivative of the outer function of g of x, and then times the derivative of the inner function. This is sometimes referred to as the onion rule because there can be many layers. So derivative of the outside first, but it's still of the original function, and then times the derivative of the inner function. So I'm just going to write this down. We're not actually going to find the derivative of this, but what if I had e to the power of sine of 2x squared plus 3? How many different functions do we have? The outer function is e, and then we have an inner function of sine, and then in there we have a power function. So we'll be taking derivatives starting with the outside and working our way in. Okay, so we're going to do just four examples. We're going to start simple and then work towards a pretty crazy one at the end. Okay, so let's start with y equals 5x to the third plus 3x all raised to the fifth power. So I kind of have this power function, but it's like a polynomial within this power. So to take the derivative, the derivative is, so think about the power rule. This 5 would come down and then we would subtract 1 away. So 5 down in front of this inner part. So 5x to the third plus 3x to the fourth. And now we multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is 15x squared plus 3. And I'm not going to worry about simplifying this anyway, just ending it right there. All right, example two, f of x equals the square root of x to the third minus 4x. So before I do derivative, let's just remember that this is the same as x to the third minus 4x to the power of 1 half. So we're basically doing the power rule again. So when I do the derivative, I'm doing the power rule. So derivative of f of x is... So 1 half, and then x to the third minus 4x, take away 1 to the power of negative 1 half. And now times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared minus 4. And I can clean this up a little bit. Um, so I will have 2 in the denominator, and then also in the denominator this part right here because of the negative exponent. That would be the square root of x to the third minus 4x. And then 3x squared minus 4 can go in the numerator. Okay, example 3, y equals, this is kind of the very first example I wrote. So e to the power of sine of 5x to the ninth. So we have three functions. We want to start with the outer one. So derivative. So just think derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So derivative is e to the all of this sine of 5x to the ninth. Then we have to work our way in. We're peeling the layers. Derivative of sine. So times that's going to be cosine, but it's still of 5x to the ninth, and now working our way in, now the derivative of the inner part is times um, 9 times 5, 45x to the eighth. And that is your final answer. Okay, so our last example, I want you to hang tight, stay with me. We've got h of x equals 
cosine squared x over x. And we're actually going to evaluate this at pi over 6. Find the derivative at pi over 6. Okay, so what we have going on right here is actually a chain rule and a quotient rule going on at the same time. So quotient rule because I've got the division. Um, but I do want to talk about just looking at this cosine squared x. How can we re rewrite that? That's also cosine of x squared. So if we're just doing the derivative of that, that's the chain rule. You bring down the 2, so it's 2 cosine of x. But now what's the derivative of cosine times negative sine x. So negative 2 cosine x times sine x. That is the derivative of the top. But I have this chain rule going on. So remember, chain rule is derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second over the second squared. Okay, so derivative of the first, this is what we did over here. So derivative of the first is negative 2 cosine x times sine x. Okay, I'm going to cross it off if I, as I write it. Derivative of the first times the second. So now we have times just x. Okay, minus the first cosine squared x times the derivative of the second, well, derivative of x is just 1, all over the second squared. Okay, so if all we were doing were finding the derivative, we'd be done. But now we're going to plug in pi over 6. Okay, so we have to plug in pi over 6 into every x. And then let's start evaluating all of the trig functions here. All right, so I've got negative 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And then I still have times pi over 6 minus. So cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. But we have to square that all over pi over 6 squared. Okay, so let's simplify. Um, if I'm multiplying here, I know well, half of 2, that will cancel. So I'll have negative square root of 3 times pi all over 2 times 6 is 12 minus, if I'm going to square this, that will go to just 3 over 4. And that is still all over, if I square this, it would be pi squared over 36. Um, I'm going to get a common denominator here. So I'll multiply 3 and 3. So that becomes 9 over 12. So I'll have oops, negative square root of 3 times pi minus 9 over 12. And then I'm going to do a keep change flip. So keep, change it to multiplication, and change it to 36 over pi squared. 30, or 36 over 12 would go to 3. So then if I distribute that 3 out, I'll have negative 3 square root of 3 pi minus 27 over pi squared. And that is my final answer of the derivative way up here at pi over 6. So these can get kind of messy, especially when we start messing with chain rule within a quotient rule. There is your um, full video, though, on the chain rule. Good luck with your lesson.